Hello and welcome to a new video about security, safety. This time we are going to talk about uh, safety relays. Uh, so, switching element which turns something safe on and off. Uh, I will try to explain how those work. I will start with a classical three contactor version. Uh, these are the classic, classic safety relays, uh, how they are working inside. Let's have a short look. Uh, usually those contactor relays, uh, well, they have a case. I will simply draw now here. The case. Usually they are designed in yellow color or something like this, yeah, which is really noticeable uh, that you can find them in the cabinet quite easy. So this is our case and we have a bunch of connectors in our case. Yeah. So usually we have two connections with plus and minus. Here the operating voltage is connected. Yeah? Then usually we do have an input one, two, three. Yeah? One, two, three. This is what is switching. Yeah? So these are three phases of our public power supply system or something like this and we want to switch this safely off. Here's the input, here's the output, here the drive is located. I'll make it a little bit to the right. Here the drive is located yeah? and we want here I connect the power supply yeah? and here I connect somehow the drive yeah? and I want to switch this off safely. So of course there is a switch inside. Uh, one switch. This is usually a contactor and those are switched together. Yeah? This is a contactor one, K1. Yeah? And if I want to save it to, to be safely switched off, yeah? I usually make simply a second contact inside. Second contactor, K2. Also connected to each other, K2. So, if one of those two contactors are opening, I switch off. Yeah? One can already fail. This is actually the ground rule, let's call it, of safety. To do it twice. And only if those two are doing the same thing, it's safe. Yeah? Usually, we also have here some additional additional contacts yeah, which just show if both are switched on looking like this yeah. so if both are switched on yeah then both are open and here and here is no longer connected yeah. So I could use here to let a lamp, a lamp or something like this shine. Here the plus line. This is going already out. And here inside I have my two contactors. So I have here somewhere my K1, the spool of my K1, and I have here somewhere my K2, the spool of my K2. Those two they are connected. Here with minus. And here they hold themselves, K1 and K2. And here are two terminals, and I just go to a switch 
emergency stop switch, which I connect to the plus. Okay, so this here. the emergency switch okay emergency switch if I push this I will open here yeah. puck, puck, open plus is no longer connected to here K1 will open pff, pff. K2 will open pff, pff. that's it yeah. both are open now I have an issue, how do I close them again? Just returning the emergency switch to its original position is not working. Yeah? Because these are open, these will not turn on. This would be stupid. Yeah? I push emergency stop, yeah? then I release emergency stop, Boom, it's already starting. No, this should not be. We told about this. We need a reset button. And this reset button looks like this. Yeah? There is a plus, there's an additional, additional terminal. This terminal, we go out, somewhere there is a reset button. Okay, this is the reset button. And then we go back into our safety relay. This is just passing through then. Then we could do additional line to some actuators or whatever who shall be in a certain position that it is safe yeah? or we just short circuit this yeah? so this line is only for additional information which needed to be fulfilled to be able to reset this yeah? and then it looks like this There's a K3 also. I said it's a three contactor. K1, K2, three contactor method. And here it looks like this. K3. K3. Okay. And even here, there's this K3 inside. But this time with normally closed. So what is now our our task or our circumstance that we have switched through? K1 needs to be energized, K2 needs to be energized, and K3 needs to be off. Okay? Then we have connection. So K1 is energized, K2 is energized, and K3 is off. K1, this is closed, K2 is closed, yeah? and K3 is off. K3 is off is simple, because if K1 or K2 is closed, tuk, tuk, this will be open and K3 is off anyway. Yeah? This is why those two things are inside there. Then I said, we open the emergency switch, K1 and K2 will open. Tuk, tuk. If K1 and K2 are open, they will be closed here, because this is the normally closed contact of K1 and K2. Yeah? So K3 would be ready to be energized. But only after the emergency switch is turned off. Yeah? And if I press here the button, the reset button, then it can go here. K3 tuk, tuk, is closing. Yeah? If the emergency switch is also now off, yeah, in this position, normally closed position, yeah. then K1 and K2 is energized, they will switch on, yeah. switch, switching on here also, because they are switching on, K3 will be de-energized, falling back into rest position. Now, there is a timing issue here, because let's imagine, K1 is already turning on, K2 needs, would need a little bit longer because this K3, this contest one contact here of the K3 is maybe a little bit late, something like this. Then K1 will be switched on, 
it will open here, K3 will open, and K2 will never come online again. Yeah? This is why usually there is also some condensator here. Yeah? Which will simply lead to the fact that K3 is switched off with delay. Okay? So give both, both the time to switch on. Huh? This is charged, this condensator, and only if both are open quite a long time, then K3 is switched off and boom, then we really switch through. Okay? Now, this is the standard case. Now let's say we have a failure case. Huh? Why is this? I mean, I do it twice. Okay, that's good. And I need a reset button. That's also good. That's also already two things of emergency relay I would expect. Huh? Now, let's say there's a failure case. Let's say, I don't know, this emergency switch, this is simply not opening. This is here welded together or whatever. This sticks. Huh? So only this one is opening. What is happening? If this one is opening, K2 will switch off. K2 is switched off. Boom. We switched off. That's good. Huh? However, we have now a failure in the system. Huh? K1 is still switched on. Yeah? So K1 is still on and here it's open. K1 is open. Because it's still energized. This is normally closed. Boop. If energized, it's open. I cannot reset this now. Yeah? Because K1 is simply detecting a failure. So even this is covered. If there is somewhere a failure in an emergency switch or something like this, I cannot reset this. Yeah? So this is how a safety relay is working, was working. Nowadays safety relays, they really don't have these contactors inside, they have electronic components inside. Yeah, there are different type of, of, of uh, safety relays available. So there is this emergency switch, emergency stop, there is uh, might be also this this uh, movable guards we talked about the limit switch of the movable guards can be used here yeah? uh, light curtains two hand operations something like this yeah? can be here yeah, two hand operation two two contactors yeah? this can be covered with this usually they do have now electronic components inside simply because they are more reliable that's it yeah and also smaller, uh, needs less place. And with combination of some of those protective relays, safety relays, I can protect my whole, my whole thing. Okay. So this is a typical example, or this is how a protective relay is working inside. Uh, there was then the need or the request that not only we need permission from the safety relay, yeah, we also want to have already safe controls yeah, and how those are working and how they are built up inside, we will hear next time. Okay, for this video, that's it. Next time, safe control systems. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.